There are two ways to clean and dress poultry. The right way and, yes, you've guessed, the wrong way. Let's not disturb this poor bird for the moment and we'll see how to do the job the right way. First of all, we need a knife, shears, skewer and string. If you are right-handed, place the bird on its side with the breast facing you and feet to the right. Take the knife and make an incision at the back of the neck and continue the cut down the length of the neck to the shoulder blades. Turn the bird over and complete the incision the full circle of the neck. Now pull the skin back over the breast, which will reveal the crop firmly attached to the skin. Loosen the crop thoroughly and disconnect it and the windpipe deep down in the neck cavity with the knife. Cut the neck off about one inch from the base, thus disposing of crop, windpipe and head. In order to loosen the connective tissue, a cut is made on either side of the neck to the skeletal structure. The bird is then firmly held in the left hand, and the second finger of the right hand is used to loosen any remaining connective tissue holding the entrails in place. This operation must be carried out thoroughly to ensure clean removal of entrails. Having completed this step, we now invert the bird and make the pelvic incision. This is where the most errors are made in poultry dressing. Frequently, a vertical cut is made from the breastbone to the vent. This is wrong. The correct method is to place the finger over the vent and the knife on the tail. The cut is then made between the vent and the tail, that is, under the vent and over the tail. This is most important. Having reached this stage, it is necessary to disconnect the bowel from the vent and draw it away from the carcass. This will prevent contamination of the carcass. We now complete the loosening of connective tissues by forcing the finger into the abdominal cavity. Make sure that you disconnect the fatty tissue on the wall of the abdomen. The entrails are forced out by placing the thumb behind the gizzard. It will be found that the entrails will come away cleanly. Having cleaned the bird, the next job is to truss and tie it down. Once again, if you are right-handed, place the bird on its side, breast towards you, and legs to the left. The skewer is first inserted into the wing. Now it is important that it be placed in the correct position. If we can examine the wing, we find it resembles the human arm. We have the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, the thumb, and the hand. Along the outer edge of the wing, between the shoulder and the elbow, is a sinew, which we use to hold the skewer in position. The skewer is placed under this sinew, but over the bone between the shoulder and the elbow. The leg is then forced up high enough to allow the skewer to pass through the skin of the leg, not the muscle, and over the back of the bird. To prevent the skewer breaking, grasp it firmly in the hand, bridge it with the thumb, and force the outside or offside leg onto the skewer. Now all that remains to be done is to pin the wing to the skewer. To improve its appearance, the bird is spread on the skewer before the tying operation, which comes next.
place the bird on the string parallel with the hocks. Bring both ends up between the legs and the body, invert the bird and tie securely. It is most important to bring the string up between the leg and the body. To further improve the appearance, the pelvic bone is spread to add to the plumpness of the carcass. To enhance the appearance of the rear end, the vent is fastened to the tail. The final touch is added by dropping the breast. Insert the shears on either side of the breast, making the cut approximately one-third of the way along the breast bone. The neck incision is covered with the skin, which is held in position by the wing tips. The result? A highly attractive and appetizing carcass. So different to this. <laughs> Thank you.